What's up guys, Joel Valley from Media Glitch here and thank you so much for letting us in your home again tonight. If you're watching this on TV, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for joining in. Uh, we got a great show for you guys tonight. First of all, uh, starting off the segment, we have the PlayStation Plus games, Xbox games with gold, and the Humble Bundle, all these free games that come out. We're gonna go over those guys and so you can know what you're what you're getting. We also have a review of, of the Spectrum Retreat, a new video game that's about to drop, as well as we got John's Weird Junk. And I'm not trying to be a perv, it's just that's what he calls this segment. And it's not what you think, it's crazy video game stuff you may have never even seen before. He's like went in his garage and he's gonna show us the gems. So we got an amazing show. But now I'm gonna, I got Ashley, the beautiful, lovely Ashley here for you guys. And uh, thank you so much for, mm -hmm. of course, being a part of this team, doing what you do, playing all these games. That's all I do. That's all you do, literally, <laughs> yeah. literally. You even have a, um, a Twitch channel. You should probably bump that, why not? Yeah, why not? Um, you can find me on twitch.tv slash 505 Gamer Girl for all of your Sailor mouthed, rage worthy video game needs. It's, it's not as family friendly. Definitely as we not got here, family kids. friendly. I'm just gonna put that out there now. Yeah. You know, so don't definitely. you know, not one you want to watch with your children. Definitely your not. Lap. But if you'd like to watch Fortnite, Minecraft, Destiny, Overwatch, maybe even some Stardew Valley that I've been overly obsessed with lately, then come and hop in the stream sometime. I'd love to have you. So PlayStation Plus uh, games mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, dropped on Tuesday. Yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. And by the time they're watching it, it's been a week. But yeah. that's okay because a lot of people don't know what comes out sometimes and they mm -hmm. forget. And quite an impressive lineup. Why don't you take us into this? What do you got? Well, let's start off with PlayStation Plus. This month we have a strong start with Dead by Daylight. Oh my. This game is going to be on your PlayStation 4. This will be a definite download for me. I'm not normally one for horror games, but this looks like something I'm gonna need to download because I've heard nothing but absolute glowing reviews from this game. It looks amazing and the premise looks amazing. Like I saw the part where he opened that thing and I like, I shivered. I was like, oh my God. Another awesome game I've heard, this one's for your PS3. It'll be Bound by Flame. I believe this is an a RPG style game where you go through as a single dude going through. I like this game actually. Are you going through quests and stuff? It looks very Dark Siders y to me. Very hack and slash um, adventure style game. So that'll probably be another download for me as well since I love them action games. And we got. This one's going to be Serious Sam 3 BFE. This, this is one, on the PS3. Yes, also on PS3. Looks ridiculously awesome. One for your Vita is gonna be Draw Slasher. This one looks like it'll be super cute, but it looks like something I would get bored with quickly, just because I, if I don't You're have totally something- You're totally wrong, it's a blast. Is it? Yeah. Man, my attention span is that of a goldfish, so I just, <laughs> <laughs> I need to be fully engaged or I'm done. Uh, another one we have is Space Hulk for your Vita. Another this is War, a War Gamer. Girl, huh? This yep. is a War Gamer Girl's game this right there. This is it, Warhammer style game, this is it. For all you Warhammer fans, the 4K Space Hulk. Man, that looks uh, Space Hulky. I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know what to, what to say about that. <laughs> Hulky looks, spaces. But it's for your Vita, which is cool. Mm -hmm. So you can take it anywhere. This is an extra game we are just now learning about. It'll be Here They Lie for your VR on your PS4. So this will be one for all my VR fans. This is, oh my God, this is, oh, mm mm, mm mm. See, I played a couple scary games on the VR. And, and I don't like it. I'll, I can't do it. See. And then, of course, Mafia Three. So that's a that's quite the lineup right there. It's a huge lineup this month. If, have you played Mafia Three? I've never. It's a bit repetitive. Is it? But if you love fun, it's repetitive fun. Like if you is, love you know what I mean? fun. Do you like fun? Yeah, well, uh, who doesn't like fun? That guy sitting over there. Look at him. Like I guess. Smile, John. Nerd. Jeez. <laughs> Good lord. So, so far I think PlayStation's really leading the punches right now. Man, it looks like this is, this is insane lineup. This is a, uh, this is a it, great lineup. It's my birthday month. Of course it's going to be a great month. What I want to know is the Dead by Daylight, and maybe Dylan, uh, do you know, are they going to bring in those extra characters like Michael Myers? If you play it on the PC, they got Michael Myers, they got uh, all these like killers mm -hmm. that you can play. I hope that that comes. Ooh. Let me know in the comment section uh, below if you guys know if they're bringing that stuff to the PS4. Ooh. Maybe they already have. 
I haven't ever played it on the PS4, but I'm looking forward to it. I hey, either. it's free. Yeah. It's free. Come on. What else we got here? Next, we've got our Xbox Games with Gold. So this month, we are starting off with Forza Horizon 2. So all for all my arcade racing lovers, this is it, guys. Aren't they on Forza 6 now or something? Or? Uh, I think they're at Forza 5, last I checked. But Horizon is a Horizon, Horizon and then it, Horizon okay. 2. It's like the sub. Yeah. Right, gotcha. Uh, lots of really nice cars. I saw a GTR in there, so of course I started salivating. Um, love me a GTR, my god. Wow. Another okay. really good hitter will be For Honor. Turn the air on, kids. And that's what I'm saying. For Honor, we're getting <laughs> oh. sweaty, breaking into dungeon. Uh, that's cactus. actually a pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good free game. That's right a there. really good free game. That's, that's a, a that's, that's a, a good triple game to A buy. title. So if you're all about a lot of PvP style aspects, for my PvP guys, this is all you. Wow. Right? That's what I said. And then what do we got? Next, one of my favorites oh, because I'm a large so child. And this is free? Epic Mickey 2, The Power of Two with Oswald the Bunny. I loved this game on the Wii. Loved this game. It's so good. It, it is, is I did really a review good. on it when it came out. This game is amazing. Man, a long, long my brother and I are in love with like side-by-side -side games like this and Ratchet and Clank and stuff, so Epic Mickey has a special place in my heart. Oh, yeah. Last, we have Dead, oh, Dead Space, Space 3. 3. Not my favorite of the bunch, but still a solid This game. is the only one I've ever played, and oh, I was really? terrified the whole time. Nah, you gotta play was... the first one, oh, dude. God. That's where it's at. Please, I got my no. platinum no. in that first one. I could barely do three, because like things would just pop out, and I'd be like, blah, 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 and I just... I don't oh, do that, all the stuff. If you can't stuff. do three, you can't do one. <laughs> I, I'll tell you that, man. Holy <laughs> cow, let me just say, that's a pretty solid solid. That's lineup already a as solid well. month for console alone. <sighs> That's what I'm saying. Um, Fire up them routers, guys. We're gonna be downloading. <laughs> and for, yeah. And for what I understand, like for Honor, they have updated tons of things now, yeah. and it's a really awesome game. Uh, if you want to get into it now, now now's a good time. Yeah. Well, because why wouldn't you? It's free. And we can't forget about our PC. No, people. of course. We have some of the games from the Hundle Bundle already announced. So starting off Humble Bundle, we have Escapists 2. I have never in my, well, I'm just now getting a gaming PC. So, you know, maybe I'll get a Humble Bundle for a month, man. I don't know. We'll try out some games. But this looks really cute. It looks like a. Did you finally get a PC? I, it's coming, actually. I just got my keyboard in today. Right, let's, let's get it my done. My mouse is there. I'm waiting on the monitor in the tower. I just got a new PC today. Oh. It worked. This is one that I know we actually reviewed at one time. Oh, Conan that's Exiles. Miranda's favorite game. Conan Exile. She just took it all, she took it all off and went Endowment crazy with Simulator. It. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I remember her, her, her reviewing that. All yes, right. I remember too. We were all here for it. So now it's free. Well, it, it's not we free. We still get comments on that review. It's part of the humble bundle. So if you guys are interested in some I love Okay, sorry. Keep going. Super RPG kind of game. That's a survival. What is it? What do they call them? Caveman Simulator. Caveman Simulator. <laughs> well, that's unique. Hey, this looks good. Yes, this game looks super cute. Um, I love the art style, and it looks okay. like an adventure I would love to go on. It's called A Hat in Time. It looks this looks worth This looks worth checking out, right? I, I, I completely agree, because it almost looks like a, like a Mario or a Spyro. Yeah, like a 64 old school mm -hmm. PlayStation. But back more in the open day. world. That's what I'm saying, like a Mario 3D kind of thing. Much where it's polished. Open. Yes. That so looks solid. Those are the games that have been announced for the Humble Bundle. And of course, if you don't buy the Humble Bundle early, you don't get access to the other Humble Bundle games. So I, I would say we're looking at a pretty solid setup. I don't know about the, the PC games. I don't know a lot about PC. Well, but. looking at the, the Scapist, that's fun. Mm -hmm. A Hat in Time looks good. Conan, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. It's been a while since we've gone in. I know there's been a ton of updates. Mm -hmm. I know, Miranda, were you not too crazy about it? Uh, it takes, takes a long a time, time to get going. It's so, kind of like Ark, right? Survival. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't. And it's funny because we still get comments on that video today. And wow. people are like, oh, but. And they're complaining. I'm like, man, do you know? Did you read the date of the when we reviewed that? <laughs> of course things have changed. It's like 100% different. Anyway, <laughs> it's just a pet peeve I got. So, well, that is it, guys. That is. The right? That's the. That's all of August. What an awesome month. That's a killer month. That's a killer month. That's a good month to be a gamer and just like have all these free games. Could you imagine like when we were kids and it all Just you, getting it, free games? And you just got free games? Oh my god. I would be like, who needs Blockbuster? Like, Hollywood video, get out of my way. 
for for fifty dollars or forty nine fifty. That's usually the uh, except for humble bundle. Yeah, sixty dollars a year. But for six for the price of one game as a kid, you could have tons of games every month. Yeah. It blows my mind. I'm not trying to sell you on it, but well, I'm trying no. to sell you on it because especially the plus PlayStation Plus membership. Man, I got honestly, my, I got stacks. Games. Dude, same. I'm like Scarface. You know, he's got those like cocaine. Just like, <laughs> so that's how I feel like cocaine. when I go home at night and I sit in front of my PlayStation 4. I'm like. Give it to me. <laughs> we should make Wah. that. We should make that into a meme. That should be a meme. My cue, me. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us this segment. We're gonna take a quick commercial break. We're gonna come back with a video game review. You're not gonna want to miss it. Don't waste. It. Don't miss out. Sorry. Now. What's up, guys? Thank you so much for sticking with us after that commercial break. And now I have the big bad. Michael Brown. What's up? How are you, man? <laughs> I'm good, man. How are you? I, I wish I'd have gave you a better introduction than that. <laughs> Dude, but, Big uh, Bad is pretty sweet. Big Bad Michael I'm Brown. I felt like there's more, <laughs> and I was just like, what, what is it? What am I looking for? But, you know, hey. Oh, we're good. It's, it's, it's live. What are you going to do? So, yeah. uh, you got sent an interesting game. We got sent, and you got it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. For the PlayStation 4, but yeah. it's not just PlayStation 4. We're nope. looking at. It's on Steam, Xbox One. And what's the name yep. of it? So the game is called The Spectrum Retreat. So we're going to hop into an asset. Oh, right away. So um, it, I, I'm going to kind of talk through some of this clip because it's a really interesting premise for a game. First off, let me say that the game is made by uh, a new studio called Dan Smith Studios. OK? OK. So it's a, it's a young kid that built this game. He's like, I think he's like 18 or 19 now, but he started working on the game when he was like 15 years old. So and a 15 year old made this game. Yeah. Dan Smith. Dan Smith. He's Thank not you, 15 Dan. anymore. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. So he, he's of age now. <laughs> he Ash is. Ashley. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so oh, no, no, it's not. She's married. I'm sorry. So this <laughs> game, it, it, it's one of those games where <laughs> it's all good. So you load into the game and you really don't know anything that's going on. I try not to educate myself on the games before I play them because I just want to get a hands on experience. This is me trying to figure out buttons. Ah. <laughs> okay. So anyways, you, um, you awake and in a hotel and your door is being knocked on. You answer the door and this faceless... Alfred. Yeah. Faceless Alfred's there. He greets you and tells you that you're expected to come downstairs for breakfast. Right. And you're like, all right. So cool. you're, it's a morning time. Yeah. You think. Oh. All right. Oh, man. <laughs> so um, you shut the door and uh, immediately as soon as you turn around, you start to hear something going off. And uh, you're looking around, you're looking around, boom, there it is. It's, it, they, they call it a phone in the game, but it's like a, I don't know, futuristic phone, so I guess. it's a futuristic phone, yeah. Yeah. And uh, you- You got a trophy for answering the phone. <laughs> platinumed. Nice. Anyways, not really platinumed. But anyways, um, so you're looking at the phone and it starts giving you these messages telling you that you're expected to go downstairs, but everything is super glitchy. You, media glitch, right? Nice. But you have no idea what's going on. It just says you are expected. And uh, so I start wandering down these hallways and you'll notice that I only take left turns, right? And that was I, a right turn right there. Wait, okay, fine. Okay, I only yeah. take, <laughs> hey, the point is okay. you can tell I don't go in a circle, right? Okay, okay. All right, boom, there's my room again. Okay. Right? And so that's the first part where you're like, this Some is, PT stuff going on. Here. It's a little strange, right? Did you ever play PT? Yeah, oh, I did. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, so finally, I, f I make my way down to the lobby and... Title screen. Yeah, title screen. The but rectum retreat. <laughs> Sorry. Can you say that? Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it, it's bizarre, right? Like, the game just keeps throwing you curveballs. I get down into the lobby, and the front door of the hotel is one of those rotating doors. And I'm like, sweet, I'm going to leave the hotel. And I go to walk out the rotating door, and it just spins me back into the hotel. Oh, and yeah. it's like, okay. And basically, the whole beginning of the game is just kind of messing with your mind. You really can't tell what's going on. There's no true sense of direction really no telling you what to do. The game almost feels kind of like, did you ever play Myst back in yeah, the day? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Y yeah, you, you just kind of have to explore and figure things out, right? And uh, it, it's the, the, the premise, you, 
you start to find out is these faceless automatons are kind of guiding you through the hotel. So this guy's going to tell you, you know, you're expected at breakfast. We've got everything set up for you. And as soon as you sit down to eat, your phone goes off. You check it, and once again, things just go glitchy. They go haywire, and the, uh, so it says attempting communication, something along those lines. And as soon as you look up, the clock on the wall just starts freaking so out. Starts going bananas. Yeah. What are you eating? The, uh, oh, you ate it. Yeah. It's just it's an omelet, I think. You didn't eat it, though. That's, that's, that's a crazy thing. <laughs> right? So at this point in time, you are just baffled. Okay, are you liking the game at this point when you're playing it? Yes, but you know what? This is a good time to mention. What? I got incredibly motion sick from this game. Really? Yeah, yeah and yeah. I don't get motion sick from games. Oh, really? Yeah. Is there a reason? Is it on purpose? So there, there is, and not on purpose, I okay, don't think. Okay, okay. But we're going to look at why it happened in greater detail later in the video. But okay. I will say that as soon as I quit playing the game, I felt really not well. And so the first thing I did was Googled the Spectrum Retreat motion sickness. And sure enough, the first hit on Google was another person doing a review. And they said, go into the settings and turn off motion blur, or you will get sick. Uh, turn off motion blur? Yeah. Really? OK. Yeah. I sometimes bizarre. turn motion blur on yeah, to no. help with that. So. It, was, it was not a great, a great feeling. So, Crazy. But, right. So at this point in time, you really have no idea what's going on, right? Got you. And um, fortunately, you start to find some clues throughout the game. And the clues come in the form of these small little cubes. And basically, when you start finding these cubes, you're able to par start putting some of the puzzle together. Like Hellraiser. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and what you can tell is that the idea is that this hotel is a digital world. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like you're in the Matrix kind of thing. You know what I mean? Gotcha. And, the, uh, and supposedly, the hotel was designed with giving a user the greatest vacation experience they could ever have. So you're somewhere in like Total Recall. Yep. Right? Yep. Okay. Your phone goes off and you start getting... Are we spoiling the game for these people? Uh, no. Okay. No. We're, we're, if, if he is, you all direct your comments <laughs> to Michael Brown, spoiler. If I tried to do a review without saying any of this, okay. I'd be like, you walk around in a hotel True. and you, do I mean, some How do you puzzles. review a game like this without giving some of the goods away? Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Okay, it'd be ahead. It'd be super tough. So this uh, lady, Cooper, starts communicating with you, and you can tell through your interaction with her that I, I get the hint that she is like IT support for this hotel. And she tells you that she's trying to help get you out of the hotel because you're trapped there. Gotcha. And through those clues earlier, that this I guess there is some spoiler alerts going on here. Um, through those clues earlier, you realize that the original developer of the hotel created all these automatons. One of them is known as the manager, and he has override permissions. Got you. So my guess playing the game is that this manager uh, decided that he was going to lock down the hotel like for the robots or something, you know? I'm not 100% sure, and I'm glad I don't know because I, I wouldn't want to spoil everything, right. you know? Um, but anyways, Cooper starts guiding you through the hotel, and you figure out that the only way to advance through this hotel is to try to get to the rooftop. That's where you can get out of the hotel. Gotcha. So this, this moment in time is where you f really start to get into what makes this game truly unique, in my opinion. And that is the concept that you need to go through different levels of the hotel, solving puzzles to gain access to the next level. Right. Right? And at the end of each of these sections, you have to go to sleep to reset the day. OK. And that's how, one, once you've done that, you have access to the next layer of the hotel. Gotcha. All right? So um, I actually want to jump right into that because it's probably the coolest part of the game and the most unique. So you basically, these puzzles are all called yeah, color puzzles. I found it. All right? Uh, so you get access to these color puzzles, and here's the idea. Your cell phone is colorless originally. All right? All right. You go into these puzzles, and basically the goal is to touch colored blocks with your cell phone, and it changes the color of your cell phone. All right? And here, basically, you had to get a secret code to get access to the color puzzle room, right? But um, your phone will pick up the color of the blocks. So say you're walking through this 
Color you already puzzle. lost me. Yeah. It's, okay. That's, I mean, that's, <laughs> it, it is a pretty unique style. Okay. All so right? Different kinds of puzzles that you haven't seen before in a game. For sure. Would you say? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. Yeah. Um, so you'll go into these color puzzles. It's taken a long time to get there. But you'll go into these color puzzles. You're using a colorless cell phone. You'll touch a block, say an orange block, yeah. right? And to go through a walkway, there will be an orange wall. And the only way to get through that walkway is if your cell phone is colored orange. Gotcha. So. And so uh, graphically? Yeah. Graphically, it's really good, in my personal opinion. I mean, it's not mind-blowing. You know, but I think that the it's the, mind blowing if it's a 13 year old kid, <laughs> right? I would agree with that. Making this game, yeah, I would agree with that. Um, to be honest, what like, were you doing at 13? Certainly not this. You weren't doing this. No, you were making I, block colored puzzles. That's for dang. I was sure. just coloring with colors. You were just it, coloring, yeah. just learning, the, staying the lines. Yeah, the other stuff I <laughs> the other stuff I was doing, I don't think we can talk about when I was. Oh there. man! But uh, you know, those teenage years, I'll tell you what, I was a rebel, but um. You know, you, yeah, you've got a good point. I mean, for for keeping in mind like who it was designed by, I would agree with you that graphically it's it's a pretty solid title. Um, but it does to me look more like a PS3 game. Oh, really? Okay. Than a PS4 game? Yeah. Yeah. Would you agree? Well, you probably started. That's true. When before the PlayStation PS3, yeah, 4 was, was like, announced, the PS4 is like, oh, dang it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I thought I'd have it up by time now. But. For sure. So this actually is one of the first color puzzles. So you can see when the phone turns orange, yeah. I can walk through that orange door. Ah, I see what you're saying. When it's white, you're locked out, right? right. So I pick up the orange, I can move through the door. Um, you it, can't move through that white one now. Not when, well, see, my phone's white right yeah. there, so I can. No. Oh. Locked in, Yeah. right? The, the beginning puzzles are super easy. I will say that one thing I wasn't a huge fan of was even just getting through the first floor of the hotel, I had to complete five of these puzzles independently. Four and would it, have been fine? <laughs> four would have been better than five, <laughs> for sure. But it gets worse. Like, when you get to the second level, it's there's ten. like eight of them. Oh, yeah. And they're not, like, I'm all for difficult puzzles, but... It started is there that to get satisfaction when you complete it. There is okay. for sure. I'll say that. But my, I guess my gripe with it is when you're doing like eight to ten puzzles to clear a level, and you're genuinely interested in the storyline, you almost start to forget about it because if you get stuck on one puzzle for an hour, yeah, you're just like, man, the storyline's not really progressing. Um, once you get to the second set of puzzles, you can see that they introduce another color. So now there's green, right? And they have all these little cubbies in the hole to where you have to put the colors through the wall. Uh, yeah. Yep. And you can trigger them with your cell phone from, or phone, I don't know if it's necessarily a cell phone. I'm not good phone. at puzzles. I'd have been like, two colors? Yeah. I'm done. I'm not going to lie. It took me like, it took me like an hour to get some of them. They were tough. Um, what I will say is. This 14 year old kid is how outsmarted smart did you me. Do it? For, well, clearly he made the game, which is outsmarting me right off the bat. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, I will say that if anybody's looking for any tips or hints, what really helped me is I'd go into these rooms and I would go towards the exit because the exit was clearly defined. You just couldn't get to it because the right. doors are in the way. And instead what I would look at is what colors am I going to have to eventually have towards the end of it? Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Thinking ahead. That was, the, that was the easier way to do it. If you start just picking up colors, placing them randomly, you're just going to find yourself locked out, super Even frustrated. Even worse. worse. Yeah, because than when you started. Yeah, because you've moved all the colors around the map, and now it's just oh no, dude. just super random. I can't, you know? I can't do games like that. Yeah, it's real. It's a, it's a good game. I would definitely recommend it for eleven ninety nine. It's really, really good. I can't. I'm actually really excited. Eleven ninety nine. That's yeah. not bad. That's not a bad price. Huh? It's not. I'm, I'm pretty excited to get back to it and continue playing it because the story actually interested me, honestly, more than the puzzle system. Yeah. I thought it was a cool concept to be in a hotel that you're inside of, apparently digitally, that you can't escape and somebody's guiding you to the escape. I love all kinds of things like Total Recall. You yeah. Know, like that kind of stuff. It, it um, was definitely like a Matrix-y style storyline. And what about uh, sound? Uh, music, was there? Sound was good. The whole game in the beginning really has a like creepy sort of vibe, right? Yeah. Like you're walking, you're Faceless not- Faceless Alfred. Yeah, you're not good. going in circles, but you're ending up back at your own hotel room. 
And you're really confused at first. Like you walk into it and you're like, is this my hotel? Right. I'm pretty sure it is. And then you go downstairs, you try to take the rotating door and it rotates you back in. But at that point, you don't have any information that it's a digital hotel. Right. You're just, you wake up and that's where you are. So you put your stamp of approval on this? I would say so. Yeah, the game's gotten pretty you solid hear that, reviews. that David Smith? David Smith. Darren, Darren Smith, Daniel Smith, what is it? I think it was David. David Smith, you yeah. hear that? Approve. <laughs> Approve. Um, the interesting thing is that there have been a few kind of complaints, I guess, being lodged online against the game, and that's that it is two totally different styles of game, and they don't mesh well together. Like, right. they're very independent of each other. One's exploration, and you'll do that for an hour, hour and a half, and then the other one, you're sucked into these, like, Puzzles. puzzle room that you can't escape from till you're completely done gotcha. for another hour and a half. Gotcha. So, so cool, man. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much. Thanks. For playing it, reviewing it, yeah, getting sick. Yeah, for sure. Motion sickness for, it was rough. for for the cause. Couple hours. The love was, of gaming, guys. Yeah. This is what we have to do sometimes. The game was worth it. You know. So okay, we're gonna take a Dave, Dan Smith. That's they're telling me in the Dan year. Smith. That's okay. It. <laughs> thank you so much for sending that to us. And uh, we're gonna take a quick commercial break. We're gonna come back with weird. John, what is it called? John's, John's weird, weird junk. junk. And it's it's video game related. I promise it's nothing <laughs> it's nothing bad. Uh, but take a minute now and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're watching this on TV, don't change that channel because we're gonna be right back after this message. Welcome back from that uh, commercial break. Guys, thank you so much for sticking with us if you're watching this on YouTube or on TV. And before we get into John's weird junk, which is some video game stuff. Guys, you probably have never even seen some of this stuff. When I'm sitting here, it's right here. I wanna show it to you so bad. I wanna show you John's junk. But before I can show you John's junk, I got a little announcement. We are going to be, and when I say we, I mean these lovely ladies and myself, Media Glitch, we are gonna be where? We're going to be at Game On Expo in Phoenix, Arizona. That's right. So um, let's check this out. I'm going to give you guys some information. Let's let's check this out. So Game On Expo is August 10th and 11th. Okay, that's like in a week or something like that. It's 11th and 12th. And 12th. 10th, 11th, and 12th. Yes. And uh, guys, you guys, we go. We do this every year. Uh, so Troy Baker is going to be there. Jennifer Hale. These are Steve uh, Downs. We got Johnny Cruz from Overwatch. We got, man, there's so many people here. You guys, you gotta wanna be there. Uh, YouTubers, cosplay, huge arcade setup. My boy Daniel Piscina, all oh, the Mortal, yeah. original Mortal Kombat guys who I, mm -hmm. who I know. Um, I'll be moderating that panel, the Mortal Kombat panel. It's gonna be awesome. Got my boy Jimmy from lots of games. Uh, like, you, know, you all know Jimmy, he's been here on the show. And we got just a lot of stuff going on. John Riggs, Reggie, Radical Reggie, two of my favorite people right there, gonna be there. It's gonna be an awesome time. You're not gonna wanna miss out. Uh, the passes are what, like, is it for? For VIP, it looks like $75, and for the full event, three-day early bird special discount, so that means like right now, yeah. you wanna get in on that. That's going to be, I think, 55 bucks? 55. 55, and then, but if you can't make it to all three days, you wanna go, Saturday. Saturday. Yes. Yeah, look at this. Saturday. Joint. Look at this joint. Now we uh, we were there last year, mm -hmm. correct? Awesome. Ashley, you moderated the Overwatch panel. Yes, I did. Which is now our biggest viewed viewed video. Video. I think it's it's, it's crazy how much view. There's Princess Zelda. We had a great time there. <laughs> Megan was there. Look at this wood, Billy <laughs> from the Game Chasers, acting crazy. We had a, such a good time. Uh, Gamester eighty one puts on this event. I'm telling you guys, you want to be there. You got to go get your tickets. You got to go get your tickets now. So we can uh, stop running that asset real quick here. And so uh, you guys are going to be, Megan is going to be running our table. Yeah. She is going to be selling stuff, her artwork, maybe some media glitch merchandise, mm -hmm. dyeing mm -hmm. people's hair, all that kind of stuff that she's good at. You know, and Heck then yeah. uh, me and you, we will be moderating a ton of different panels. We got so some panels. We, it's insane. Yeah. Um, there's going to be so many things going on here. So uh, you guys are not going to want to miss that. So go to the Game On Expo webpage, discover more. So now for this next segment, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Now, my boy John, I, I went to his house one time when I first met him, and he's got like 
Dracula X SNES box as a coaster <laughs> to hold his coffee. This guy's got so much stuff, and I'm just like, this is crazy. But man, he's got this garage. We could do this segment every week and not go through all the stuff that he has. I want to show you guys John's junk. John, John how are you, dude? Uh, I'm great. Yeah? You're about to see my junk. Dude. Dude. I have been wanting to see your junk for years. I've been thinking about this for a long time, and I feel like it's time in that and the I, relationship to... And I feel like, yeah, yeah. like we've... We've grown. Yeah, I'm committed to you. It's time for right. you to show me your junk. It's, it's, yeah. But are you, but, <clears throat> is everyone here in TV land ready to see your junk? No, but that's why we're gonna do it. Okay. Trial by fire. Can I pull your junk out? I, you know, there's <laughs> no better time. Up gonna? So I'm, I'm excited to show you the junk because. It's big. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, depends on what it is. I got a lot of junk. Yeah. Uh, I've been collecting for a very long time. I mean, literally my whole life. But in, in you know, years past, I've, I've gone to garage sales. Stuff has come into my store. Uh, I've been to Japan. And I found so much strange stuff that, that's come out. Some of it's uh, official and licensed. Some of it is weird knockoff nonsense. Um, but all of it has kind of like a fun place in gaming history, uh, whether it's practical or barely at all. Right. And I'm excited to, to look into some of these things with you and explain the junk. That's right. So let's grab something, man. Should we whip it out? Whip it out. Let's do this. I want to see it. Let's do it. it. I, wanna, I haven't seen it in a long time. This junk's yeah. huge, kids. <laughs> it's huge. Let me see. Let me see what I got here. Yeah, what do we got? It's gigantic. Okay. All right, let's start with this. This is, okay, so this is, yeah. It's like the smallest thing. It is, well, I know, trust me. I'm feeding um, the joke. Yes. So, like. <laughs> so uh, very thin. Um, Let's get a close up. So, show, 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 see, see the camera. Okay, so see this right here? Wait, this no, is, look at, look. this is, this is. There you go. You look at this. What, is what, that what, a camera? What, no, no. no oh, okay. So this is something that I found in a, a shop in Japan for like 200 yen. That's about $2. And um, on principle alone, I had to buy this because if you look at this right here. Okay, have you ever been out in the woods? At once. Once, okay. And did you have your Game Boy with you? I did. Okay, well, you. this is not going to work very well then. So imagine you're out in the woods and you have your Game Boy. And the battery dies. Okay. That sucks. Oh, that does. Uh, so, you know, I but, think like, I know what this is already okay. now. Okay, so I found now. this thing. And uh, right here, it's uh, the plug for the original DS or the Game Boy Advance SP. And uh, you, you, you take this thing, and you plug it into your system. Boom. Pop I out the it. side. You crank it and you make energy That's to freaking recharge your Game Boy. You kinetically recharge your Game Boy Advance SP. Oh, well, or you keep have going, like a, going, a brother or a sister or somebody so you can play. When you got your junk out. Yeah, that's right. Play with it the whole time. Exactly. Thing. There you go. So you just do this uh, two, three hours, presumably, until it's charged. <laughs> yeah. No, because it's, it's, it's less charged than if you have it plugged into a wall. So it takes a very long time. <laughs> it is absolutely impractical. Uh, but that's the joy of this is that there's no good reason to have it other than unless the, the, the power of the world goes out and you still have to play your Game Boy. Like you're in the middle of Mario RPG or you know, Mario well, dude, Luigi, yeah, like Superstars. Let's Zelda. just say. End of the world, man. This is There's it. There's no more electricity. Cockroaches have taken over. That is the hottest item. This is the number in one town. component because you don't need to plug it Can into I a wall it? to charge it. I want you to play with this. Yeah, it's. <laughs> Let me play with John's junk real quick. Yeah, this is it. My Game Boy would be charging right now, and I could either play it or I could just watch you do this. Look at that. I don't want to break it. Uh, you, you, you I don't want to break it. Don't junk, worry, you can be very rough with it. Yeah. That, like seriously, I yeah. could see that. It seems useless now. <laughs> right. But when the aliens come. Just you wait till the end, man. Blow everything to bits. Uh-huh. Have you seen, uh, what is it, Invasion? What, what's that one? It's new on Netflix, new movie. Michael Pena. Oh, no, gosh. I don't think Extinction. so. Extinction. No. Check it out. OK. It's cool. I'm watching it right now. When that goes right. down, this is what you're going to want. <laughs> that's the one. Right here. Hottest commodity, $10,000 per minute with that thing. Pretty awesome. Pretty yeah. awesome. OK. <laughs> let's uh, let's get some more junk. Let's, let's grab something. All let's, right. Let's grab it. I'm going to grab this bad boy. Okay. Because this fascinates me. That's one of my favorite things for you to grab. This fascinates me. Okay. So this one's cool. What is that? Dude? This right here. Okay, so uh, late, two, uh, late, not 2000s, uh, late 90s. Um, well, the, the, the 90s in general had a lot of video game copying devices popping up on the market. This right here is called the Dr. V64. Now what you do is, kind of like the 64 disk drive, you pop your 64 onto the top of this system and it has a CD tray. Pop a disk in there, uh, you're going to have to throw any game in there just to get the system to, to boot up and power on, Mario 64, Zelda, it doesn't matter. 
and you pop in a, a, a tray, uh, pop a, a disc of ROMs uh, into the tray, and you can play and copy all kinds of games. So you'd still have to have access to downloading them to put them on here, but um, you can you can basically play any game that doesn't require an expansion pack natively with this machine. So it's like a, a copy device. You can copy 64 games. You can copy Perfect Dark. You can copy Donkey Kong 64. Um, you copy, you, and you copy it on a CD? Onto a CD. And you could throw like 100 ROMs onto a CD. Well, maybe not because uh, CDs weren't huge, you know, at the time. Uh, but you could write 10, 15 games safely. Pop it in the front, boom, you have access to okay, a small I see library what you're of games. Yeah. And so uh, on top of that, it has a couple different like um, output ports you can see over here. We've got uh, dual output, interestingly enough. Uh, you could have a switch for NTSC or PAL. Yeah, you have a PC printer port, and I think you could actually connect it to your computer and uh, upload stuff directly. Um, it's it's really bizarre, but this is one that I actually got from a gentleman. Where does it come from? Yeah, how did uh, you get so it? So it probably just came from China, I mean, because let's be real. Um, but uh, there was a gentleman who used to work at a store, the very first video game store I ever went to. What was it um, called? It's called The Video Game Store. Okay. Original. It was called the, the video game store off of uh, San Mateo and Osuna, and it was one of the owners there. And he came in about 20 years later to my shop, 30 years maybe at that point, and brought this to us. And so I rekindled an old flame, and um, this is. Uh, it's this fascinating. Is, yeah, yeah. It's interesting that it has both NTSC and PAL. Uh, apparently, so it also too. is a VCD player because you have a, you have. Pause. I was fast huge forward. VCD, dude. Dude, yeah, we used to record them all the time. We used to record us. That was Smash like the, that's the format of Mexico. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I don't know if you know that, but when you <laughs> live in Mexico, VCD or or the Philippines too. There you go. Yeah, yeah. And so you uh, can pop in a VCD and pl play it. You can play it that way as well too. That's awesome. With your 64 as sort of like the power of this unit, it's a really fascinating device. That definitely comes from China. Yeah. Is there any, is... any any information on that? Uh, Bung Enterprises Limited. Bung. Yep. Bung Dr. V. Bung. Yeah. That's like so, one of my favorite words too. Bung. Yeah, yeah. No, it's great. So from Bung. There you go. That's that's awesome. My biggest junk. And how much did you pay for the Dr. V64? Is that what it's called? Oh, he he basically gave, gave me this kind you? of stuff because he he wanted it to sort of go to some place that was gonna. He knew you weren't getting rid of it. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, he basically knew it was going into a collection. Play button, rewind, fast forward, next, right. previous, all that good jazz. Yeah. Menu. Yes. Have you sparked it up? I have. Just, oh, just man. To, I mean, you know. I, I wish you would have just recorded some of the menus. I that you know, maybe, maybe down the road we'll do something like that, yeah. That would have been awesome, man. Sure. So, okay, guys. I have a bunch of other stuff here. We have to go. We're going to cut to a commercial. This is a good time, though, for you to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. It's a good time for you to hit that like button. If you're watching this live at home, it's a good time to go to the bathroom. Because it's commercial. Yes. Oh, wait, I shouldn't say that for my, our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, we're going to come back Turn the volume and really we're going to look at more of John's junk. And, and, and you're going to be fascinated by this stuff. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss this. Welcome back from that commercial break. Thank you guys so much for sticking with us. And we have seen the Dr. What is it? Dr. V64. The Dr. V64. We have seen if, if uh, what's that movie, The uh, Quiet Place? Oh, if yeah, you'd ever, be screwed. Oh, you'd be screwed, huh? Yeah, you, you can't so charge you, your Game Boy, the monster. You'd be there. like, I need to play my game, and bam, yeah. you'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, spoiler alert. OK. Uh, OK. So let's see. What more we have over here of John's junk. <laughs> Let's All do right. it. I'm going to pull out your blue ball do for that. your junk. That's a, I've been okay. saving that for a long time. All right, so. Yeah. John. This is the most risky thing we've I done. definitely know what this is. You know what this is. For sure. OK. Uh, I didn't know what the other stuff is, but I am a huge Dragon Warrior fan. Mm -hmm. um, tell us. You can. I'll let you. OK. So this is fun because around the time that Dragon Quest uh, VIII came out, uh, it had transferred over to the PS2, the first big full 3D orchestrated music, and uh, to celebrate the game's release, they ended up making this slime. What's great about this slime is it's not just a cute, super iconic piece from uh, the Dragon Quest series. It's a full functioning DualShock controller, okay? <laughs> Has a little stand that it comes with. Uh, it's you know, you can, because you, you can play literally anything with this, uh, and it's not super comfortable for, say, like Contra, but when you're playing an RPG, 
Uh, it's also not super comfortable for that, really. But it's it's so novel and so charming that you can't it's a, help it's but love it. It's a slime. It. It's a too, slime. Like... It's it's great. It's really it's got every button. You know, the L and R buttons are up here. Um, you've got every face button. You can analog off or on, so you could play it even on your PS One. Um, little serial port on the back, so you can plug it in, and uh, it just it smiles at you. It smiles with you while you play this game. And uh, this is one of those things that we, we actually have this one on display at the store. I've got one in my own personal collection, uh, but. When you find another one, please let me. I'll let you know. Absolutely, yeah. uh, and it's cool because you throw it up on the shelf, and people, everybody likes it because it's, it's simple and clean. The, the 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 iconography of the slime is is, you know, it transcends time. Yes. You know, we even have uh, soap dispensers at the store that are slime shaped. I you, love. You just flash their heads and. I would love to get into collecting dragon <laughs> dangerous. quest stuff. <laughs> yeah. And some people are like, why did I say dragon warrior? Uh, if you don't know. It used to be Dragon Warrior mm -hmm. here in the States right. when it was on the NES. Yes. And because I believe another like a role playing game had that the rights to that. I name believe or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. And uh, but now Dragon Quest is good. We have it. It's Dragon Quest Eleven coming out soon. Yes. You can play Dragon Quest Eleven with that. You know, through a, a bunch of uh, contraptions and. Uh, and cables and, and wiring dongles, stuff. You actually might be called? able to dongles. Yeah, yeah, you get the right dongles, and you can use your junk. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's go. sweet. That's sweet. It's, We're it's, gonna add it. It's pretty cool. This blue slime here. Oh, you can't even see. Put him on the, the, the doctor. Put him on the doctor. Or in your cup. Let's put him on here. That, that, that looks nice. He's riding it. I like that. I do too. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. It makes me feel good. It's so cool. Let's see what we got what next. What do we got? What do we got next? Uh, I got some cool ones here. I'm gonna bring this out though. Okay. So this is. Uh, you know how we, we said we had like this cool little Game Boy like hand charger thing, and yeah. that's like sort of the end all. It is you know energy is the new currency once the apocalypse hits. Yeah, almost. Almost. So this thing right here uh, is actually probably objectively a worse unit. Um, it's uh, like a handheld system. You can inject ROMs onto it, hooks up to your computer through USB. Can throw. It has like an NES built, emulator built into it, essentially. Oh, nice. Uh, you can also use it as a, a battery bank to uh, charge certain things. This is also back in like 2000. Does it have a name? Nine. Um, I actually don't remember offhand if it does. Uh, I'm sure it did because I looked it up specifically as soon as I saw this. Okay. Here's why this one is interesting: is because uh, mine's really beat up. This thing is also. Solar powered. Oh my lord. Harness the energy of the sun to play your NES games for like two hours and then you have to recharge it again. It's also not practical. Uh, and when it is working and functional, it's not that great. <laughs> oh, you can throw MP3s on here. We can put pictures on here. I think even crummy like AVI files, uh, but it plays them at sort of a poor frame rate. So it's not actually really that great to use unless you have literally nothing else. But again, world's destroyed. You'll by take aliens. what you can get. Exactly. If I need to play the Goonies I want, too, I'm coming to your house because you I'm like, correct. I gotta listen to my Lady Gaga. You you can you can listen to it. I can listen it. to it on there. And then you can play uh, Trog on the NES, and then you can look at a picture of your favorite, you know, member of Guns and Roses. Oh yeah. yeah. So everybody. Axel Rose. Ax <laughs> Axel Rose. You can look at a Axel, picture of him. Not to be confused by the mechanical dog. Uh, correct. Come yeah. To you the can theater look at, near you. So. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, objectively, actually, probably the worst thing here. Um, but kind of cool because, you know, who knew? Because it seems like any electronical device I put out in the sun, yeah. if it's my iPhone or it's my Switch, it yeah. starts acting crazy. Yeah. Not this thing. No, this thing will actually This will be act better. Better, exactly. So it has its place. That's pretty awesome. We don't know what it's called. <laughs> I can't remember. If you know in the comment Some section, let us Chinese know. Some Chinese thing that I saw online and had to have. You, so, oh, you, so you bought this I ordered online? that. Yeah, it was really, it was like 20 bucks. That's awesome. Yeah, I agree. That's great. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, let's do what, this. What is, oh, I like this. If you're a, oh. an N64 fan, right? Well, no, uh, I'm sorry, a GameCube. If you're a GameCube sorry, fan, GameCube. yeah. You could be both, though. You know, even if you own a Wii. Yes, you can right? use it on a Wii, correct. You know, everyone complains they wanted the, the, the to use the GameCube controllers on New Smash and stuff like right. that. Right. Yeah. Well, there might be a way. Yeah, because what if, what if, what if, what if you had a full size keyboard <laughs> attached to a GameCube controller? Well, somebody thought of that. Yeah. And they said, let's make this. It's so, brilliant. You even have the Z button there. Uh, you've got everything, right? And uh, the main function of this was actually for Fantasy Star Online. 
uh, oh, so you could talk to your yes. friends. Because on the GameCube, you, you couldn't text, you couldn't do anything, you could, you know. So this actually has some functionality that was used probably more than most of these things other than the slime yeah. controller. Uh, however, b because you can plug it into a, a GameCube and use it for anything, it's literally just a very wide GameCube controller. So if you're um, playing you know, with your friend next to you and you really are angry because he's beating you, you can write uh, an email to his mom or whatever and tell him that he's acting yeah, yeah. childish. Yeah, Bust him out, man. You, exactly, yeah. Get, get the dirt on him and uh, you know, say something mean without him knowing. I would love something like this. Like imagine playing... Um, Final Fantasy XIV, an MMO sure. on PlayStation, on and these console. are PlayStation 4 controllers. Right, you, you know, through a series of adapters, you could probably maybe even get this to work. Like, that <laughs> would be amazing. And uh, what's cool, too, is that the actual, like, function and uh, feel of the GameCube portions of it literally just feel like a wide GameCube controller. So it actually, uh, you can play it with anything GameCube. So I have gone to Smash Brothers tournaments with this, and people just sort of, you know, <laughs> reel, because why would you do that? and uh, psychologically it's very good for, for yourself. What I love is that they use the same plastic as the Super Nintendo apparently, because yeah, that thing looks thing is, like I someone know. peed all over I've, it. I've tried scrubbing and cleaning and it just, you know, other than dirt, it has just now died from the flame retardant But plastic. it's got the purple in the back, all the things. Is it, nice. is it an official Nintendo thing or no? Uh, so it was licensed in Japan. ASCII and Nintendo actually made this together, so it's, uh, it, it's a licensed product. That's Yeah, crazy. but it was made by ASCII. Let me see. So, yeah, it's... Really nice. Dude, come on. Make this, someone make this for the PS4. I agree. I need this, you know what I mean? Uh huh. And then I can just be like. You could write me a message boom, while boom. we're playing a game. When you're playing those MMOs, Correct. right? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Final Fantasy 14. Okay, okay. Finally. They just told me in my ear, I got five minutes. We All got right. five minutes to wrap this thing. Okay. So. Okay. We got a couple more things. This yeah. looks interesting. So, yes. What is this one? Uh, along the same lines as the, uh, the Dr. V64, uh, this is a cartridge copier for the Super Nintendo. Oh my so, lord! So I don't know if, if back in the '90s, if you ever used a Game Genie, oh, uh, yeah. every now and then you'd pop a game on. It would say my copying game, cartridges so. is illegal, which you know, of course, it is. But they were talking about this guy right. Th this here. is really actually what they meant because what it has on the side. I don't know if it will eject properly. Here we go. Oh nice! Is an actual old floppy disk. And you basically would throw a game on here. Kids at home have no idea what yeah, that is. Yeah, this is this at one point was was standard. It. If you had one of these, holy crap, you had all the power in the world. You could Commodore like 64. A song and a half on there. Remember, you like one game came on like five of those things. Yes, you had to install and you load it, it and, and you just sat there and looked at the out. bar. Yeah, and, and you these waited. things are like three and a half megs, maybe. It's really oh, nothing dude, at all. So good. Um, but what's cool about this, unlike the Doctor V64, you'd, you'd pop this in right now. This is Mega Man Seven Disc Two. Uh, You'd, you'd throw the, the disc into the machine, That's and hilarious. while the game is in there, you could actually rip the game to this. I got this from the same guy I got the, the, the V64 from, and he had a, just a tray filled with probably 100 discs of various Super Nintendo titles. And the bigger the game, the more discs were required to actually play it. So I tried messing around with this and playing through like Super Metroid, and at some point while you're playing through the game, it actually prompts you to insert disc 2, insert disc 3. It's insane. Right. Totally but ridiculous. But it works. But it works. Yeah, until you come up with a message that says, you know, you cannot copy games, and then it, which it, it, it was very picky with. Sometimes it would play just fine, sometimes it would yell at you. But uh, same kind of thing, you just pop this in front of your Super Nintendo, throw a game in there, or if you don't have a game in there, you have your disc in, you just turn it on, and boom, you've played a copied game. Fascinating. And the police are going to bust through your wall and kill you. Awesome. Give it to it's me. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. We got we to we okay. end this show. One we more. We got to bring it home. I think, right? All right, man. This is uh, <clears throat> looks like something for the N64. Correct. So this thing, uh, these were really big in the 90s with cartridge-based systems as well, too. So you pop this on to the uh, the front of your Nintendo 64. What's the top that one of it. called? Uh, this is called the TriStar 64. Oh, this one was called the Super Wild Card. Super Wild Card. Right. Yeah, We've yeah. got the name. Yeah, SMS 3021 or something. I just let's show them. Super Wild Card. Yeah. SMS 32. Okay. So this had its own power supply. Uh, as well as his own video cord. Plug this into your 64, plug the video output into this, and uh, you've got a little flap right here. You can see that? Oh, so, yeah. you can plug in any region Nintendo 64 game here to the front, NES cartridge, Super NES cartridge. You basically wow. have a three-in-one system. It's like a PlayStation 3 except better. Like a mini Retron. Uh, kind of, yeah, exactly. And it would remap the buttons to your 64 controller. Uh, there's a little reset button on the top because it covers the whole thing. 
but basically when your mom says, does the new system play the old games? You'd be like, yes, yes you idiot. with this. Yeah, it does. For the low price of two hundred dollars, probably mama, yeah, at the time we can play them. I all. think these are super expensive on old like uh, magazine ads, like Game Cave and things, because the internet wasn't really uh, pushing this stuff as much. But you could find them in the back of those old game magazines where they had wow. like the huge listings of strange. Why things. wouldn't you want that as a? Why kid, would you right? not want this? And I got this working at Replay Games back in like 1998, 1999 maybe. Okay. So yeah, local video game store, weird junk. That's great. Yep. Hey, thanks for whipping out your junk yeah. for all of us. Oh, uh, all about it. Here. And uh, <clears throat> now, let me know, guys, did you like this segment? Because he's got more junk oh, man. in the trunk for you kids if you want to see it. Um, man, what, a, what an awesome show. I want to thank everyone all everyone who was on the show today, all the things that we did. It was, it was good. This is a great time, kids, to like to comment, let us know what part of the show you like the best. Let me know if you heard of any of this stuff, if you, if you, if you heard anything. And what do you have? Maybe they, we'd like to see what you guys have in your collection, man. Uh, visit us on Facebook and, and, and show us some pictures of your junk. Oh, man. <laughs> <sighs> I said it. Uh, game related. Game related junk. So, and uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much uh, for joining us tonight. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that like button. If you're watching this on TV, head on over to our YouTube channel. Give us some love. Show us some love so we know you're out there watching. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye.